Hey Rovers, I am on Marley Creek on the 40-foot junk rig catch Terrapin, one of four junk rig boats that are here for the junket. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover story. Let's start off with some tours of these four boats. Here's our first boat tour and we're here with Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie and my husband is Mike and our boat is Terrapin. We have our son Nicholas as well. Uh, we launched the boat in 2007. Mike would know 4,400 hours. Wow, 4,400 hours. Okay, we're going to head on board for a nice little tour. Wow, this was this was made by the owners of the boat, just out of some some basic uh, steel standard um, channel, and uh, they purchased a door. Um, they put soapstone at the top. They made a little uh, ash tray at the bottom. Wow, and it's heating up the space just perfectly. Well done. So this is a composting head on board and uh, nice and simple and, and you guys built it yourselves. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, it's just a regular bucket. Yeah. And then we have these that end up being the, the pea containers. Right, okay. And is there a diverter inside the toilet? Yeah, there's a diverter that separates the pea in the front and the right. solids in the back. And do you use a medium for the solids? So we use, um, so I take a, so this is coconut core. Okay. And I end up putting a drop or two of tea tree oil in it because I oh. like the tea tree and the tea tree is just a little more antibacterial. It keeps, maybe keeps the flies down. I don't know. Right. Because I like the smell right. of it. So I decant, um, I use one of the laundry. So we use coconut core. So I think this is, okay. this is like $8, I think. And I take this and then one of the, the laundry bins. You know, one of these laundry bins. Oh, yeah. And I just put the co coconut core in it and then put in like a gallon of water. Maybe not quite a gallon of water. And it kind of expands enough that it's... That it's so, this no, so consistency, it's still, so it's not. It's, it's still not dry. It's still dry, but it's not. Um, yeah. Not solid. Not solid because it's that expands. Oh yeah. To yeah. fill. To fill that thing. Okay. So it fills oh, this. So that, so that lasts a long time. It lasts a month. That yeah. lasts. That that amount lasts us a month for the three okay. of us. That's great. And to then know. I decant it into. I usually put it in a plastic, double plastic bag and then decant it. We have like 10 of these or something. So I decant yeah, yeah. it in there and the plastic bag kind of sits there until we need it. But it's... Um, well, thanks for sharing that. That is probably one of the biggest questions I get on the channel. Amazingly. It's not about the sails, it's about the head. It's about the head. I love that head. Just look at some of these details. You know, right here. Let's see how we open this. Okay. And a really nice veneer, excellent work. And the mast is a hollow mast made out of Douglas fir. And there are two masts, of course. So this is Mike right here, Mike. And Mike and Debbie have uh, graciously uh, agreed to hoist the sail just to show us how it goes. Just that easy. Mike, what's the square footage on that? Uh, this 
one is right at 500 square feet. Uh -huh. 500 square feet. That is more than double my single sale. And so Debbie's doing the yard hauling apparel. So that, that tilts the yard up and forward, which right. helps pull creases out of the sale. Right. So a sheet on each side of the sail. Oh, interesting. Yes, very much different yeah, than that's... Wave Rover. Ah, yes. Okay, so we've got... Um, basically, Wave Rover has the same sheeting system, but it's just on the uh, leech of the sail. So you have it on each side. And why is that, Mike? That allows me to sheet the sail onto the center line which you can't quite do with single sheets because the anchor point is on the out, outboard edge. Yes. So it allows us to pull the sail further onto the center line, in theory, pointing a little bit higher. Right, okay, so, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so hoisting the sail, you made it look pretty well, easy. <laughs> pretty easy. <laughs> pretty easy. So Mike, thanks for taking the time to show us the sail, sure. and of course, Debbie. Uh, so, you, you know, you've got a lot of experience at this point, so are you happy with this sale? Uh, yes, I'm very happy with the junk rig. So we sailed many miles on a cutter rig and a sloop before, and they sailed very well, but uh, when we went to this size, our concern was one of us, Debbie in particular, being able to do all the sail handling alone. Right. And uh, with the junk rig, Everything is on two or three to one uh, arrangements, so the loads are low. Yeah. Uh, it's all inboard. There's no work on the bowsprit, and uh, it's easily reefed. So, anyways, yeah. it's a very easy um, rig to handle a lot of sail area. Yeah. Um, what What about the winch on the mast? What What, what do you use that for? To raise the dinghy. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Right. Um, you know, if 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 uh, if we're raising the sail and we can't feather, so there's some wind in yeah. the sail, we'll use that to pull up the last two or three panels. Right. But the yeah. reality is, most of the time, is what you saw Debbie pulling yeah. the sail up by herself because yeah. that's just kind of yeah. the way it's broken down. Yeah. But uh, we use that to pull the dinghy aboard because we store the dinghy on the deck here. Uh, so you can see the chalk sort of yeah. slightly diagonal. Yes, so yeah, I, I, I see them right there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I know we, we talked about this last night off camera, but you like to do everything at the mast rather than the way I have it set up and wave rover coming back to the cockpit and, and the reason? Uh, you know, if I was on your boat, yeah. I probably would have it set up the way you do too because yeah. it's a smaller platform that's going to move a lot more. Right. Being a larger platform, lower to the water, um, uh, it's an easier platform to work. But also, yeah. it forces me to go forward regularly. I like and that. It yeah. forces me to inspect things, inspect things and see things. Yeah. And I have caught problems a number of times. Absolutely. That way. Yeah. And, uh, and then there's the issue our cockpit's fairly small. It would be a lot of extra line. Well, well, sure. There'd be three extra lines from each sail. In the cockpit, right? You know, um, the halyard, the yard hauling peril, uh, the topping peril. Yeah. So uh, it'd be a lot to deal with. And since we have double sheets, we already have four lines in the cockpit. Right. Yeah. No, I I like it. And uh, the other um, sort of uh, uh, peculiar thing about your rig is you mentioned you are you have the ability to raise a light weather sail up forward. Can you just talk to us about that for a minute? Cause, because I get that a lot. People say, hey, can you put a light weather rig? Not not easily on my boat, but uh, how, how do you go about it? I suppose you asked before, um, do I like the rig? You know, yeah. one of the, normally one of the weaknesses, or one of the uh, yeah, weaknesses would be yeah. uh, it being a little more difficult to put extra sail up. So yeah, I have a retractable bow spread. That I can fly an asymmetrical or a jib from. The reality is, I really only use it for light winds. Right. Um, and which means I don't actually use the jib very much. I'm mostly using the asymmetrical or a drifter that I have. Right. 
and that's what that roller furling uh, attachment yeah, is for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. um, although the asymmetrical, I have a snuffer for, so I don't right. even use the, the oh, okay. little, uh, roller. And and you do pull it out with that spinnaker pole, do you? Uh, yeah. So the spinnaker pole allows me to reject the. Most of the time I don't use the spinnaker pole because with an asymmetrical you don't need to. Right. But I can use the pole to project the tack uh, to windward, which allows us to sail more deeply. Oh with yes, the, uh, I got you. With the asymmetrical. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, but again, the junk rig, you know, we spread 850 square feet. Uh, on just the two main sails, which means the wind has to get pretty light for us to need the light weather sails. Right. Um, well, how light would you be uh, looking at to hoist the, the light weather sail? Uh, generally around six, seven knots apparent. Okay. Is when I'll pull out the asymmetrical. If we're doing, if we're getting eight knots of yeah. wind on the beam or forward, we'll easily do four knots boat speed right with the asymmetrical without the asymmetrical we, oh good without yeah. the asymmetrical yeah. uh, I guess the point I was making is uh, the junk if you put enough sail area up you often don't need light weather sails there with you the go. junk rig yeah. uh, and it's so easily reefed you can do that yeah. you can you can yeah. maybe it's build just more just area just the height of mass we have to, yes yeah. yes uh, yeah. yeah and and the final part of that question was what would you change about your rig if anything about the rig um have you nailed it have you hit perfection with well this? so i just lengthened the foremast because i wanted because my sail was crowded so i just yeah. added four feet to the foremast because it was just a little too crowded so yeah, I've, I've done a few modifications. I think I'm getting close to kind of right where I want it. Fantastic. Yeah. So thanks. Thank you for taking the time. And, and just the last question, the name of the boat is? Terrapin. And that means? Well, terrapins are coastal turtles that live in the brackish water between the salt and the fresh water. Yeah. And they carry their home with them on their back, right? So right. So we figured it was fitting because yeah. we like the boat's four feet, four foot draft. We like going up rivers. We yeah. like exploring the shoreline, yeah. kind of like those terrapin uh, turtles. Right, right. And we have our home with us. Oh, thanks again. <laughs> and thanks for hosting this event, oh, by the way. absolutely. It's fun. So I'm now on Turtle, and Turtle is a Nordica 20. And so she is, believe it or not, smaller than Wave Rover, and this is Steve. Steve, what do you have to say about your boat? Hey everybody, uh, yeah, Nordica 20, 1980 vintage, I believe it uh, was. Um, yeah, nice little boat, sails very well indeed, and especially now with the uh, junk rig, actually sails uh, better than the old Bermuda rig, which was obviously very tired. And you and you built this junk rig, you I figured built. it out and you put it on? Yep, um, yeah, I built the... Um, the uh, mast uh, step partners, the, the mast itself is a high wind flag ball. That seemed to work out pretty well. Oh, good. that's terrific. That's what I wanted to put on Wave Rover, but I just couldn't get one uh, because of COVID. Yeah. So what's the size, the, the length of this? Uh, the mast? Yeah. Yeah, it's about 26 and a half feet. 26 and a half draft. feet. Perfect. I could just take that right now. Yeah. 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 I think it looks around about the same height as yours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's probably a little over size for uh, really what I need but right. um, with my lack of experience I wanted to go oversized rather than go under. And if you so don't if you don't mind me saying this mass step right here or the partners that is the most skookum uh, mass step I, I would expect that on maybe a 60 footer that is so strong and yeah. bulletproof well it's done not going anywhere, so, no uh, but like i say i tend to overdo things i suppose so <laughs> but they're better that than having the mask go over the side when you don't want it to right, right. so uh yeah that's that's the route i went i had a local guy up in uh, tom's river build the aluminum uh, part there right uh, yeah. and same with the step down below it's exactly the same we'll, um, we'll take a look at that in a second yeah. So you also put this bowsprit on? Yes, the reason for that is the boat sailed around its anchor, something tail, uh, even with the Bermuda rig on. 
when I converted to a jump rig, it was even worse because the mast is moved forward. Right. And it was all over the place at anchor. Yeah, I so, get I get a bit of that too. Yeah, yeah. I tried uh, windy days. Yeah. I tried uh, hanging an umbrella off the back end, you know, and that helped to a certain extent. But I felt I needed to get the anchoring port a little further out, uh, so I just built that little bowsprit just out of pine and epoxied it, and it has worked. Right. It's definitely much better now at anchor than it used to be. Yeah. So that was that's a success. And uh, when you uh, pitch up at an anchorage with that thing sticking out the front, people move out the they way. They move out of the way. Well done. And I see you have a, a ULO. Yes. Um, and I you did. you might want to explain that to uh, the rovers what a ULO is. Well, yes, I'd like to mount it and uh, give you a demonstration. But uh, I was out there this morning with it, trying it out, and my uh, mounting point here has unfortunately come adrift okay. due to my bad gluing I suppose uh, oh, but I it, see. it yes. sits in there yeah um, so you can rotate the um, well perhaps I what, what's, give... what's the length of it overall oh this is around about uh, 10 feet overall. Indeed. but uh, I've shaped the blade so that uh, it is oh yes it has a flat foil. on the back right. end curved on the front so it actually produces a little bit more lift yes now yeah. from what I discovered this morning because it was the first time I've really used it uh, the blade seems to be about the right size so it, it produces enough power but the stress on the mounting point here is really quite high so right if yeah. you ever do one yourself you've got to make yeah. that very strong indeed right yeah um, because uh, yeah the, all of the stress is on that point so you know, basically, um, I can just Isn't push. Is that shaft this. made out of aluminum? Yes, that's right. A cheap flagpole. Uh, got a collar here to stop it slipping yes. out. Yeah. Um, and then this is your pitch control here. Oh, interesting. So, uh, and and a piece of line comes from here down to a, a cleat there. Right. So when you're rowing that's the, the line is word. your thrust bearing is it oh uh, kind is of it, um, um yeah i mean i think that's what it's supposed to do um i i have seen them attached to the end of the handle here on some right. videos but i'm attaching it here for now so when you're actuating it um, um when you're pulling this way you're pitching so you're pulling the handle this way as well and then when you reverse you're pushing the handle that way and then pushing Yes. You're that way. So you see you've got positive uh, angle of attack there in the water. Yeah. So that's producing thrust. And, and what's the weight of uh, Turtle? Uh, well, 2,500 pounds according to the manufacturer, empty weight. Right. So it's fairly light. Uh, yeah, you should be able to probably propel this at at least a couple of knots, maybe yeah, three knots in, in it, a day, on a day like today. It seemed like that this morning when I was out there before that mounting point failed. It was actually going fairly well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think the blade's about the right size. Um, it could perhaps do with a little more camber on it to produce a little bit more lift, perhaps. But um, right. overall, it seems to be about right. Right. So once I've sorted that mounting point out, uh, I'll try it again and uh, we'll see yeah. how that goes. Now, what do you do for self steering? Uh, got uh, Black Bart here, the autopilot. So oh, yes, okay. So just a turn or two around there. Yeah. And, and uh, sorry, what's the name of it? Black Bart? <laughs> Everybody has the best names. I, I have the Mark III. It seems so clumsy com compared to Black Bart. Well, he does a pretty good job, I must yeah. say. If the wind is ahead of the beam, or even on the beam, um, that will sail the boat straight line all day long. Right. Even yeah. when it's choppy. Yeah. And if you do need to make a little alteration, you just twist this. Right. Uh, just to give yourself a little bit of tiller either way. And uh, this this mounting here is what's that? Yeah, for? that holds the mast when the mast is uh, all being transported. Yeah, yeah. So um, the oh, and the umbrella. Oh well, yeah. Of course, every boat needs an umbrella. It's not very. It's a Nautica umbrella. Oh, of course. But uh, it does actually work quite well, especially when it's tipping down with rain and you're trying to get up here. That was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. And it's freezing cold. Uh, and this is also what I used to hang off the back end of the boat to try and prevent it from sailing around its anchor. Right. Which right. worked to a certain extent. Amazing. But if the Very wind picks innovative. up too much, you've yeah. got an upside down umbrella. We have our hot water tank. Yes, that's and just a simple uh, shower bag. And uh, can we go below and take a look? Well, yes, I mean, absolutely. Actually, if you step down there, Alan, I'll just stay out here and explain. 
done before. So it's a very basic in interior. Um, okay. I took the cushions out because they were basically in the way. But I've just got these here. For, so this is the sleeping berth. Right. It is actually a very long berth. It goes all the way back yeah. to the stern of the boat. So I'm six one, and there's plenty of room in there for me. Right. So that, that's a good feature of the boat. Yeah. Um, this other side is used for storage. You've got a little simple cooker there. Right. Um, I just kept it real simple. Uh, the side, I added in these uh, side compartments here to help stiffen the boat up because I uh, probably didn't need it, but with the unstayed mast, obviously there's a certain amount of twisting motion on the hull right, okay. when it's under load. So I, and another reason I modified those a little bit is because when I took the stays off the old mast, I actually got another three quarters of an inch of headroom because the deck moved up that much. Get out! And really? so I needed to fill in above these uh, compartments here and, and sort of okay. to, to, to make them structural again because they are definitely structural. Right. Okay, so we've got ourselves a nice little sink. Yep. And the very same pump I have, a little whale. Yeah. And, okay. uh, I, oh, you've tucked in a little bit of insulation here. Yes, I did, uh, just because that's where I sleep and yeah. uh, that hole gets pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I used that and I've got one rolled up that I put underneath uh, or on top here and uh, a pad and sleep on that. It does actually help quite a bit. So last night, just like myself, you used an electric heater uh, to stay warm because the warm. temperature got down to... I think we came very close to zero last night, which I had frost in the cockpit. This Thirty-two. Morning. Well, yeah, it must have been below zero because I recall this morning at sunrise I I uh, saw ice on the the boat in yeah, board of me. It was chilly, all right, but yeah. I did have the famous British hot water bottle as well. That that Fantastic. helped a lot. <laughs> Got to break out that new technology. Yeah. So, did you get any condensation uh, on here? Yes, you do on here. So yeah. uh, I will be. I think putting permanent insulation on this part of the boat yeah, uh, just to prevent that from happening because it does make yeah. your bedding a bit damp. So I, I don't get the condensation, especially with the electric heater, but I think it's on account of uh, your the space right here. It's it's so, um, yes. you know, condensation will happen. Do you get condensation here? No, not so No, because there's uh, a lot more air movement. Yes, uh, yeah. I think you're right about that. Uh, your full width cabin top makes all kinds of sense on a small boat. I oh think. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cozy tucking yourself in there. It is, you um, know, in those but, um, in that warmer uh, time. But, but the increase in volume, if you had a full width cabin, would be enormous. Uh, oh, absolutely. I can see huge yeah. advantages. You don't really need side decks on a small boat, you know. No. Uh, my Contessa, and those are twice as wide as the ones that I had on the Contessa. All yeah. they used to do to me on the Contessa was catch my shoe and pull it off. <laughs> That's how narrow they were. Right. All right, so you have uh, an engine. You have a... Yes, uh, I can show you that, I guess. Okay. So there was a huge uh, fiberglass step came out to about here. Right. And uh, it seemed ridiculously big for such a small boat because yeah. it wasn't really doing anything except providing huge steps and uh, so I made this little box here and we can take this out of course it will stick now on camera <laughs> that happens all the time yeah, of course yeah. Yeah. so okay. here we are the massive power plant oh yeah uh, single cylinder BMW it's engine. tiny yeah but that's what you want uh, and, it, and it, is it reliable and... Uh, yeah, touch wood, yes, it's very reliable indeed. Great. Yeah, there's yeah. just a little water pump uh, on the front here. Uh, I just keep a real careful eye on the uh, rubber impeller in there. And it looks like you can do absolutely everything right from here. Like everything is accessible. Yes. The uh, oil filter. Uh, yeah, oil dipstick is yeah. here. So, yeah, everything is well placed. Of yeah. course, it, it is very tight. And there's... Um, there is a uh, an access hatch here on the outside, so you can get to the top right. through here. Right. And it has a cold weather start facility here, so you can just pop this off, put uh, lubricating oil or a drop of diesel in there, yeah. and turn her over on a cold morning. That'll get it going. Now there is a starting handle that goes in here. Oh, great! Yeah. But I haven't managed. I haven't got the technique right yet. You can decompress the engine by turning this knob. Yeah. Yeah, crank on that and this clicks around and then when it gets to the top here the compression comes on and the handle stops 
Right. Uh, and I don't know why. Now, when you start it with the electric starter, you don't have to use this. It seems to turn it over just fine. So whether there's, uh, maybe I'm missing it, there might be some solenoid in here that's actually you know, decompressing the engine for you when you start electrically. Right. Uh, but uh, I haven't discovered that yet. But it's certainly you don't need to have the engine decompressed to get it going. It will start just yeah. fine. Yeah. The starting handle is very substantial. You could fend off pirates with that. It's good. It's good to have. Um, yeah. you know, everything has to serve two purposes on these small <laughs> that's boats. Right. So that's under investigation presently. I just, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it starts so well on the electric start. I haven't really had to worry about the handle. Just right. Yet. Oh, and um, can can you just tell us uh, briefly the trip you just made? So. Oh yeah. So uh, I live in Toms River, New Jersey, so I trail it down to Cape And, and just for, for folks who may not know that, Toms River is located um, between, say, Cape May. They'll know where Cape May is and they'll know where New York is. And Toms River is located Half, halfway. Halfway, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, trail it down to uh, Cape May um, and then put her in the water there at the boat ramp down there. So I self-launched yeah. and uh, came up the Delaware through the C&D Canal, yep. down the Chesapeake. Okay, the very <coughs> same route as Wave Rover. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. Very cool. And so the only thing we haven't looked at is what would be the V-berth. So yes. uh, I take it it's just used for general storage. Well, like general storage, and you don't really yeah. want to look behind Right, it no, it is. General storage. <laughs> we are not going to look <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> but we will take a look at the mast. So, um, right, so there is what the underside of the partners looks like. Yes, that's, I haven't really finished that as I want to right now. But that, no. that big cleat so, you can see yeah. there, uh, that is taken out and put above the partners for the lift. For the lift, I figured, and yeah. Then, uh, and then once the mast is in place, I just put it down here so it doesn't interfere with the sail. Right. And then we've, we've got our block that's connected to something solid here. And then the, uh, the mast step. And then this bolt, I take it, that's to keep the mast from popping out. Correct. Yeah. Oh, it's all here. It's all here in 20 feet. Well done. Oh, and even an inverter. Well done. Yeah, I figured that might be uh, useful. I actually don't yeah. use it that much, but it's well, nice when to you, have it. When you make your YouTube uh, videos, you need to plug the um, the computer in to okay, do the yeah, editing. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for uh, taking the time to uh, show us your, your absolutely lovely boat, by the way. Oh, thank you. I, thank I, you. I appreciate it. I love this boat. It's terrific. So I'm here with Pete Hill, and Pete is the skipper of Kokachin, which is an absolutely beautiful boat. Uh, Pete, what can you tell us about it? What's what's the overall length? Um, the hull length's 36 feet, but she's more or less 40 feet by the time we've got the um, uh, anchor at the bow and the davits at the stern. Right. And what's the uh, what's the make of the boat? Well, it's a, it's a French design, designed by Dimitri Le Forestier, and it's a Jean de Plaisance, and he designed a range of them from about 26 feet up to 50 odd feet. And right. this is the, uh, his sort of, what he calls the 40 foot version. There's them, virtually all built in, Fr have been built in France, and there's probably about eight or 10 sister ships to this. Okay. Um, Friends of ours have a sister ship, and they just completed a eight eight year circumnavigation of it. Wow, that sounds great. Uh, so this, when you got this, was it a junk rig or? Uh... Well, this was um, it was built in France, and we found it on a farm um, not far from Paris, and the builder had built the whole um, the cabin and then his life had changed and he'd sort of moved on and he wasn't going to finish the project so we bought it off him <coughs> transported it to Cornwall and then spent three years finished building the boat. Three years okay now you of course have, have decades of junk rig experience so is this junk rig version you have here is this what you would consider like the best? Um, well there's different types of junk rig. Um, <laughs> this is very good junk rig, but uh, I've had several different sorts and they're all good. Yeah. 
The one thing I noticed right off the bat is you have uh, both sail packs on the starboard side of the mast. Um, why, why, did, why both on the same side, not why one on the opposite side? Um, some people put them on opposite sides yeah. and some don't. Okay, um, right. Mm. And I, I love the traditional way you're using the uh, belaying pins and uh, but one of the things that really sticks out are the shutters. The shutters on the... Uh, yeah, well the, the, um, the shutters <laughs> um, protect the windows. We've got quite big windows and to take those out to sea um, it's a bit dangerous really. Um, a big wave could um, smash them in. So when, when we're out on the ocean we shut the shutters and they sort of they form storm boards. Right, yeah. And then the other thing I've noticed is you've got the uh, the air only vents, the same as uh, what I have on Wave Rover, but this is a slightly different version. This has the Dorade uh, scoop on them, and I have the flush deck ones you can see on Wave Rover there. Uh, how do you find them? I get asked that a lot. Do you do you find that you get enough air movement through them? Um, yes, they're uh, the scoops aren't that big, so we don't get loads of air. Um, but if it's certainly if it's windy, yeah, they blow in. Right. And and if you are somewhere cold, you sometimes yeah. need to shut the vent to right. get cold yeah. air coming in. But, but they they work quite well. Yeah. yeah. We've never had water on deck, so can't comment on the waterproof. Right. I, I have. I have. They they do they seem work. to work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is great. Sure they do. So can we can we speak a minute about self steering? What do you do for self steering? Self steering? Oh well, we've got a, a wind vane with a, a removable uh, fabric vane, and we, it, it comes in two parts. So what you can see there is the heavy weather version, and we can add another one on top. Top. Oh, that's good. And yeah. then it it runs with. Dyneema lines down to a balanced trim tab behind the rudder. Right. And are you happy with it? Yeah, it works fine. Yeah, it works really well. Great. Great. Well, I think uh, we'll now... Oh, the, the, the last question. The masts are made out of uh, aluminium? No, the masts are wooden. Wooden. Okay. Um, they're, they're almost solid. There's about a two-inch square hollow in the middle. Yeah. And then we put several layers of unidirectional glass fiber on top oh okay yeah because i'm seeing some uh, dark where the rubbing of the the battens would have occurred and uh, that's why i thought it was aluminum so oh good good so that's uh and and what's the wood the wood is maritime pine it's maritime a french uh, uh, wood that's grown around bordeaux area oh great great well, thanks very much for taking the time to tell us about the upper deck. Um, I'm now uh, going to go below. Uh, would you like to give me a tour of that? Yeah, Linda will give you a tour down below. She's very good at that. So I'm here with Linda, and Linda's going to give us the second part of this tour of Kokachin and uh, it's the below deck. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, first of all, Linda, are you happy with the boat? Am I happy with the boat? Yeah, yeah very happy with the boat. She's yeah. incredible floating home. For me, this is mainly home right. than the boat. And, and how long have you been on it? Uh, now, two, a year and a half or a something half. like that. Right. Just about, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great with the sliding uh, I know. doghouse. Yeah. Oh, and look at this, a spiral <coughs> staircase. <coughs> and this is where we had dinner last night. How, I think we were eight people sitting around here and there was room for more. <laughs> so g g give, us a, give us a little walk through what's happening here. In oh, the boat. what's happening here? Wow, quick one. Uh, we wanted a boat which won't be like a cave inside. Yes. So actually this boat we made all these windows so we can have a view of the sea when we are living and sailing which is beautiful. And, and these two back here on the transom they open so you get terrific yeah. ventilation. Yeah, yeah and it's very beautiful to see the waves and all of that. And then we have more windows and more lights you know. Little these are diamonds. these massive windows that we were just looking at on the outside 
So they actually open on the inside, and then we've got the shutters on the... Yeah, which protects us from the big seas. Look at that. Yeah. So this is when we're at sea, and then when we're ashore, we open these up. Yeah. And then we've got the... Uh, we can have that opener The draft, closed. and it's really nice, yeah. And then... Oh, and, and, and underneath the table here? Oh, this is engine. This is... Well, we rarely use it. We did 12,000 miles and yeah. 60 hours of engine. Look at the engine. looks <laughs> brand new still. <laughs> it is Excellent. brand new. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> but we always keep a seacock close. Uh, you know, unless engine is on. That's very important. Very important. <laughs> and then last night, even though it, it actually got down, I think, below zero last night because we had ice on the deck this morning. Yeah. So. And how were you last night? Warm? Wow, warm because yeah. she's insulated. I insisted doing yeah. that. It took so long to do, yeah. but it's worth it every bit. But so for a heat source. Oh, now then, we have many heat sources. We have a diesel sort of cooker, oven, and heater, not used much. Then we cook on an induction electric heater when we have enough electricity. Right. Behind you is Ooh, alcohol look. cooker. It's, it's the Wave Rover cooking system. But it's double. Uh, yeah. Wave Rover, I just have the single, and you've got Very the double. Very good. Yeah. And we have a wood and coal stove, which Look is unbelievable. That. What a beauty. That's what kept us warm last night. It is so good. We just yeah. put two pieces of wood, and it just warms us up so quickly. Yeah. It's just really efficient. And this little fan, for those of you who don't know, these little fans, they just operate off of the heat from the stove, and they spin, and they distribute the air. Yeah. And a nice bit of ventilation without yeah. any electricity. I know, yeah. it's incredible, yeah. So the other thing maybe unusual about the boat is water, how we deal with water. We have it like this. That's not unusual, that's exactly yeah. how Wave Rover does it. There that is so you good. Go. Yeah. So you just fill that up. And, and look at this sink. <laughs> Again, Wave Rover style. So yeah. actually, this is a, a big improvement on Wave Rover. Fruit bowl from IKEA. <laughs> Fruit bowl, that's <laughs> terrific. But that is a trough like for dishes. When we wash up, we put it there to drain or whatever you don't want on the counter. It yeah. can go there. That's free space. Yeah. Lots of space in the galley. I like this with the spices and when we are cooking. That's a breakfast thing. And these are pots and wow, so teas organized. and coffees. Yeah. But you have to be organized. Huh? But it very much, very homely. You know, this is... Uh, Pete said it is yeah. floating cottage. <laughs> floating cottage, wow. Oh, wow. So, and that's, this is just, this is the area we were in last night, so I have no idea what's up ah, forward here. Ah, you have no idea. So there you are. This is a guest cabin. This is a guest cabin. I could have spent the night here, Actually, nice and warm. Yeah, yeah, I know. I realized that. So if you want tonight, you are yeah. welcome. You will have this privacy. That's oh, how much look privacy at that. Yeah. you have. Oh, but nice. It works. Oh. And, and this is our this is the master the master, master bedroom, bedroom. Yeah. with a library. Oh yes, uh -huh. great ventilation. Yes, and uh, reading then, lights. And yes, you've got a vent up there, one yeah. of the air only vents. Uh huh. Nice. Yeah, they are very important. Actually, yeah. they are very good. They give good ventilation. Yeah. Then I have a hanging wardrobe. Oh, a hanging Can wardrobe, luxury, luxury, luxury. Wow. <laughs> The shoes come out there, it doesn't matter, but you know, everything has a place for oh, itself. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. Uh, now we are two heads, two heads. Oh, wait a minute, we will close this. I think you want that closed, maybe. And so this head, is it a composting yeah, head? Yeah, composting yeah. toilet, homemade, yeah. but it works very well. Right, mm -hmm. right. Incredible. Um, and uh, of course, another IKEA bowl, is it? No, that one came from Yorkshire. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't know who made it or how. But more water, you know, yeah. for our things. And yeah, I'm just toothpaste, brushes, mirror. Right. Again, more light, more ventilation. It's terrific light here. Yeah. Uh, what do you use in the toilet for a medium? Yes, I know because they told me about. We use ash. Ash. 
in the winter. So you see, I mix oh, yes. up yep. from last night. I didn't put it yet, you know. Yeah. But otherwise, it is uh, yep. sawdust. So yeah. So so I've used both on our homestead, both ash and sawdust. Uh, but as otherwise, medium. if that's not available, compost just for the plants, for tomatoes or flowers, you know, right. compost. Yeah. You, voting is all about little bits of ingenuity, and they have to be simple and work. So it took a very long time. First of all, how to find something so simple to hang this, you know, hanging window. And Pete came up with this tiny little ring. Oh, That's beautiful. simple. Yes. The other big problem was at sea, with a big sea and rolling, how do we stop this without having to drill a hole, you know, all sorts of complications. Yes. And it had to be done from inside. So he came up, I think this now works, <laughs> as I position it, with this. So you see, it can't oh, move, nice. can't move nice. and it can't move this way. And then the window and keeps it secure. And it has that bit to keep it secure. I mean, yeah. that took a year of thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's true. Getting the, the simple solutions, like when people see it, they go, oh yeah, that's easy, I can do yeah. that. But coming up with the concept yeah. is of, of simplicity exactly. takes a lot of thinking. Exactly. Yeah. So I love that, you know, yeah. how simple that is because we struggle so much. So anyway, I fit this before we go in rough weather. We yes. know something is coming, ocean crossing or whatever. Yeah. But it's very good. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Terrific. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is then four P. These are like barn doors. Yes. Why we, is that? Wow. This is in case never we hit something or something. Okay. So, wait a minute. It needs opening. So you can do that. So if we are unfortunate that this is full of water, right? At least water level shouldn't come to here because water level is lower down. Yes, yeah, so and the pressure will keep yeah, this tight. Yeah, so that is what should be water tightish door. Right. We don't use it often like this, separate, yeah. but you know it is connected usually, and uh, it's good because. It stays visually like this. Right. That's a full pick our main storage for the boat, but we don't have a spare sails or anything. This is our kayak we just bought inflatable. That is like spare dinghy for us. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, not in chain. And do, my. Do you, know, do you know how much chain you have? Yeah, 80 meters of chain. 80, 80 meters, so meters. about 200 and Here it is. 240 feet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then, oh, so well organized. Oh, well, well we done. have to be because I forget yeah. <laughs> the color Excellent. scheme. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so everything's so neat and tidy. Oh, well, love it. Better be. And this is our spare fridge. I didn't show you our fridge, but I keep vegetables here yes. and generally cover them with the paper so it absorbs humidity. Right. Um, that is a bit of a problem with humidity on vegetables. Pete has a bench behind there oh, really? with his stuff, but now it is totally covered. I don't think you can see it. It's all the mess. Oh, loads okay. of stuff. Well, we've I seen don't... benches yeah, before. Yeah, we saw that before. Um, oh, I must, I want you to film this rod. You see, I told you about the dinghy. Not yeah. now, but when we go out, I would like to demo because I never done that. Okay. You know, fin sculling? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very yeah. good. Mm. Uh, so, in closing, if, uh, if you could change anything about the boat, what would you change? Interior nothing i wouldn't change anything perfect yeah, yeah. um exterior that is peace department there are little tweaks about steering you know heavy steering and things yeah. like that by interior no i really think she's perfect as a home excellent <laughs> thank you so much thank you <laughs> Just that easy. Oh, nice, neat system. I still have to do something like this. Uh, this is IKEA bags. Oh, is IKEA that right? is doing very well with us. Yes, well, well yeah, I have an IKEA comforter <laughs> to keep me warm. Oh, maybe she, maybe she <laughs> run big, but that's what it is. <laughs> and just so you know, IKEA is not sponsoring this video. <laughs> Thank you.
look at the size difference between Wave Rover and Kokichin. Well, if you find these videos inspirational, educational, or just downright entertaining, consider becoming a patron. There's a link in the video description and it doesn't cost you a penny to check it out. As always, Rovers, thanks for watching and forge your own adventure.